Campaign 2020, several candidates are vying to lead the nation's largest prosecutor's office as the LA County District Attorney. Incumbent DA Jackie Lacey is defending her seat against challengers like former San Francisco DA George Gascon and former federal public defender Rachel Rossi. Our Hermela Aragawi spoke with Jackie Lacey earlier today and began by asking if she's viewed as the old guard with her approach. Well, I, I reject the title of old guard. They've never had an African American or a woman as district attorney of LA County and never want anyone with my experience and background. Uh, I believe I'm uniquely suited to carry out criminal justice reform. I've had people in my family who've experienced mental health and substance abuse issues, but also I grew up in a neighborhood where crime was an issue and I know how important it is to have safety. So. Some of the things that I'm most proud of, of course, are how we have targeted human trafficking in our community, focused away from the victims, more toward the uh, human traffickers, as well as focusing on protecting children from uh, complex child abuse issues, as well as mental health, which uh, goes hand in hand with homelessness. If you've been to LA, you know there is a severe homeless population and a significant number of those people are suffering from untreated mental health issues. We asked about whether the reports are true that she will not be at tonight's debate in Pasadena. It is true and for a couple of reasons. One is that uh, the org we've discovered that one of the organizers of the debates is funded by the same person who's funding the San Francisco DA. So we want a fair and level playground. ground. The other thing is, is I invite people to listen to the debate. It's still on. Uh, the website of the organization that put it together, 90 minutes, we covered all the issues. And uh, quite frankly, if they couldn't control the protesters so that they only protest when I speak and all my opponents to speak, that's really not a fair uh, playing ground. So we're asking for an environment that's fair for all of the candidates and allows the, the uh, people who are in the audience to listen. Lacey also discussed the effort to drop violent crime and lower the incarceration rate. Well, with three strikes, I absolutely agree. It needed to be moderated, and I supported in 2012 uh, the initiative that said that the third strike should not be a series of violent felony. Mental health, we were talking about diverting people out of the jail and into uh, treatment. We were one of the first people to do that, and we've diverted probably more people out of the jail into mental health treatment uh, than anyone uh, other DA's office probably in the nation. Uh, my, uh, my theory, though, and my belief is that these reforms, you need lawyers who understand the details of this, because oftentimes we'll enact reforms without realizing the consequences. A perfect example is Prop 47. If you had any kind of relative, which I have had, who you tried to get to give off, get off drugs, it wasn't until they hit rock bottom that you were able to get their attention. The court system was able to do that at some point. They were able to say, look, um, you could go to jail or you could go to treatment, and people were choosing treatment. Now, though, you don't see that, and people are dying in the streets. People are overdosing, and my position is, okay, let's enact these reforms, but let's make sure we have programs and a plan B in place. And oftentimes these reforms are enacted, but no one thinks about the consequences. No one really gets into the weeds and says, all right, we need this other mechanism in order to get people help. I absolutely agree that the draconian drug laws, particularly those federal laws that had mandatory minimums, hurt people of color, um, are responsible for mass incarceration. Uh, and I agree with that drug crimes should have been dropped from felonies to misdemeanors. Uh, I did not agree, though, with the theft part of it because the theft part of it is it raised the limit. You could steal $950 worth of stuff over and over again. The only consequences you're going to get is a night in the county jail. And that, that behavior is very deliberate. And uh, if you don't have any consequences on that, you're going to see that. But what I do think is that, uh, and we're seeing this in L.A. County, okay, if we're not going to have... Uh, be able to push people into treatment, then we've got to develop more of an incentive to get people into drug treatment programs. So in LA County, for instance, as I've been DA, I've been a participant in what's called the LEAD program, which is the Law Enforcement Assisted Diversion. Those programs put cops on the street and they find people who are drug addicted and say, can I get help for you? Are there services I can get for you? And so in LA, we've really invested in that. In San Francisco, not so much. 
And that's what's weird about someone coming from there who had a problem, who didn't deal with it coming to LA, where we're already working on the fixes. And that's what I'm talking about, a very meaningful criminal justice reform where you don't allow people to suffer, to die, uh, to hurt others without some sort of plan B. We also asked about the closely watched Ed Buck case. He's the West Hollywood political donor charged in overdose deaths. Well, after uh, being in the district attorney's office for so many years and actually filing cases and handling cases, there are no dead bang cases. There are no dead bang. You can prove it no matter what. And as a, as a smart prosecutor, you have to anticipate the defenses. And you have to look at the different laws. There are different ways to prosecute uh, Mr. Buck through the federal system and through the uh, state system. And when we looked carefully at that evidence, I put some of my best lawyers on it. They said there are problems with the way the evidence was seized and there are problems proving that Buck injected uh, the victims in this case. And that was the issue. We had to prove he injected the victims. The federal law, though, is different. You don't have to prove. You can just prove the furnishing part of it. Nevertheless, it's a tough case. The, the witnesses in that case are, um, there, there were some challenges, and we firmly believe that you don't file cases for political reasons to win brownie points. You file cases, you take away someone's liberty when you know you can prove a case beyond a reasonable doubt. And with Buck, we really tried to look for ways to file, and it wasn't until that third guy came forward that we had enough proof, we had the proof we needed in order to file a case against him. And of course, stay with CBS in Los Angeles for continuing coverage of the LA County DA race. You can see all of our campaign 2020 interviews at CBSLA.com.